Welcome everybody, here's your strategy wolf and welcome back to Strategic Command American Civil War. Welcome back to our rematch versus El Kenai Destroyer. We're playing the Union side and we're going into the 14th turn. It should be around the yeah, switch of the years, let's see. Um, last time we pushed a little bit in a surprising open gap and at the Potomac front, so actually the offensive the weather doesn't allow for huge offensive nor our forces but the enemy posed some gap to us and uh, yeah we tried to exploit it a little bit i'm quite interested uh, excited to see how the enemy reacted to that one apart from this we're mainly getting ready for uh, let's say a new year's offensive or like for the next year basically and yeah that we sh shall be ready for at all fronts um yeah but depends of course a lot on the enemy so let's go in together and see what the enemy did together okay here we are Attack on Fort Thorn, yeah, not very promising. I don't know, if I were the enemy, I would rather really try to take out the mine and get my MPP away, but yeah. Maybe it isn't that easy due to our cuff. If Fort Gibson under attack. Yeah, but like over the river without a lot of preparation with these weak forces, it should be hard. Here they run into an ambush, okay. And the partisans will get out, I guess. Looks like the Missouri situation is at least resolved down there. Here the enemy attacks on our push at, at Beauregard. Okay, this makes sense, but... Okay, the, there she reinforces. Interesting. We couldn't really... I was expecting the enemy to retreat, actually, from the Alexandria position, or, like, to move to take the forces a little bit back, but it didn't happen. But what did happen was that we just saw Kentucky join our cause, so finally the fronts are open over here. All right, regiment destroyed. This was the one that ran into the ambush. Kentucky joins the Union. Very nice. British, French, and Spanish forces seize the customs house at Veracruz. Yeah, talking about here about the basically the beginning of the uh, French intervention in Mexico, where Napoleon III installed uh, Emperor Maximilian II in Mexico. Um, if you're interested in that one, I highly recommend you to have a quick look at my Victoria Three introduction video, where I like uh, tackle the history of Mexico in the 19th century. So it is goes. It's very much related to ours here. Uh, yeah, while doing this commercial, I was leave about got to read the others, but I think it was just tiny towns switching sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we've got engineers, a gunboat, first extra. Yeah, reinforcements coming in. Very nice to see. Um, all right, let's have a look at the the front lines together. Yeah, I mean, now we've got the calf here, so we can get an excellent reconnaissance down here. So we shall see what the enemy um, feels over here. I mean, this is fair. This is absolutely fair. This I feel like this is kindly nicely contained. So Warrington, they, they got nice supply. We could uh, interrupt. We were able to interrupt the street over here, but still they got seven, six, five, five, six. So yeah, this is a, absolutely a tolerable situation for the enemy and the mud. Or do we have mud? Actually, I'm always a little bit confused, actually, by the display over here. We're, by the way, in, still in 61, December 13th. But yeah, the weather and so forth is not allowing for the easiest attacks. Yeah, you see, the movement is also pretty much limited. Apart from here, I could... Yeah, I, I think I'll I, I probably try to switch our attack a little bit to here to attack Beauregard and maybe force them to leave Winchester and retreat a little bit over here. Since I don't see myself really pushing down over here, at least as we now we know the amount of troops the enemy has here, and this is quite significant, I'd say. Or it deviated some troops from down here that were planned to attack Fort Monroe, which again I really doubt that the enemy will be able to attack Fort Monroe uh, without any artillery support because this is simply too heavily entrenched, and yeah, two hexes are too little, in my opinion. All right, so much about here, but still very interesting development. So let's get to Kentucky and Yare. Kentucky joined our side, very beautiful. So thank God we took, brought some troops in. So we will be able to, yeah, at least reach the most important. I mean, the enemy has to come from down here, so I don't know how prepared she is. Um, I will be able to uh, at least secure the most important parts of Kentucky for sure. Yeah, we look. it looks quite well, interesting. Over here, yeah, we see how this got kind of resolved. Um, yeah, and we, we're crushing some enemies. It's going to be interesting how we proceed. Maybe take out Fire at Will by... I mean, we took it already, but retake it by cutting out also, sieging it. 
potentially interesting. Or let's take out the uh, Partisans first. I don't know yet. Over here where we saw the HQ last turn and there's one more Brigade. I don't know. I haven't seen any bigger movements in this area. So yeah, this is going to be uh, no, no big stuff happening in this area. What else? What else? What else? New Mexico over here. Yeah, everything stays kind of the same. Maybe the enemy realizes that she needs to change strategy at least a bit and move over here. Probably. I mean, maybe it's actually time to retreat. So we rather have the unit available on a long for a longer time. Yeah, a lot of thoughts to make. Uh, still a very interesting situation. Let's have a quick look also at diplomacy. Um, and don't... Uh, I think Spain popped up a little bit harder. 10%. They were almost at zero. Alright. Um, yeah, we've got Jerry ba uh, Garibaldi. Don't forget about him and the Italian brigades that came in. That's going to bring also a lot of twists. And apart from this, um, yeah, quick report. Look at the reports. Did the enemy spend anything special here on diplomacy? Nope, just research. Yeah. Enemy trying to catch up over here. Heavy research investments now. We have we did it quite early on, so maybe the enemy. No. I feel like the enemy stretched it a little bit more out. All right. Yeah. Okay. Not too much to say from this point. All right, guys. As always, I'm gonna take my notes uh, and then execute them. Oops, I hit S. Accidentally, and then I'll be back with you guys and uh, execute them with you together. See you in a second. All right, guys, I'm back. I took my notes and so forth. Um, let's start over here. And yeah, since I was considering the retreat kind of to save the unit, but actually I do consider the reinforcement rather more since we do have some acceptable supply around here. And the enemy is really having a hard time as long as this supply is not really built up. So we're gonna move this calf in here to... So they work as a double unit. It's gonna be quite hard to take them out, I would say. And worst case, we still have the movability to get out. Um, and over here we just secure... Yeah, Fort Thorn is actually the best uh, position to be secured, so... I think here it makes more sense to have the brigade here in this in the road to Fort Thorn itself, while the better morale unit goes into Fort Thorn yeah, and the rest protects Santa Barbara. Like this, we should be. Yeah, in worst case, we can always retreat, hopefully. Um, yeah, I hope this works out as always. Um, let's see, this is our defensive position for now. Um, offensively, I feel like we can only act. I mean, if the enemy moves up too high, we can always take out their supply, but. I don't think it's going to happen because they also got an HQ. Probably it's here in Messia and so on. Yeah, for the moment I feel like this is quite an annoying defensive position. These two brigades. I'm quite happy that I took down a second brigade now, to be honest. All right, coming over here, we've got our new Ostagi unit, which I'll move down here. Since uh, we can potentially take Kustenalala, Kustenela next turn so it's more or less to control to last year to get this unit i don't want anybody to take fort bellman so we're gonna have the patrol around here or as reconnaissance in this area that's the idea so fort gibson stays fort gibson fort bashida oh i oversaw this one how much is this to reinforce four it should according to my calculations this doesn't work out so let's let's keep them at four to be honest for this one turn they don't have any prepared bonus next by so i feel like next turn they will not take it out however here i reinforce the osachi and salina to have them back at 10 over here next to nashville we reinforce these guys to five so they can withstand another attack um right these guys just make up the connection over here And then, I don't know, let shall see. I want to take out these kind of partisans, they're really, really annoying. So, let's try out this. Yeah, I don't know how this works over the long, time, uh, long term. Then I think we can take down Freeman to P. Rich, this should help us actually a lot. Uh, you guys move closer to fire at will. And these guys... Yeah, if we have this one, we don't. We can just keep one unit here, and you can do some, let's say, flank protection. Okay, let's take them over here. 
uh, don't don't get surprised um, if they don't starve. It's it's a partisan unit, or um, yeah, they will not get any damage from supply lag, so they can take the supply from the surroundings. Um, but maybe with three brigades with preparation bonus, we shall be able, we should be able to take them out. Let's actually quickly check the supply next turn. Yeah, Freeman in Peerage really makes a difference. And maybe then from here off we can actually go to Van Buren as next is the next logical step in my opinion. I'm really questioning myself when the enemy is going to withdraw the HQ of Wadey over here because he's like kind of a waste. But some unit at the moment at least has to uh, protect Taliqua for the enemy. Yeah, there should be reinforcements. I wonder when the enemy shows the face over here. All right, coming to um, Missouri where we these two units keep their position just as a block while we refresh the brigade here to Poplar Bluff to 10. All right, and then we just wait whatever happens here. The enemy can't really surprise us. The ways are way too long and too too terrible to run to really yeah, do something nasty and get an hour back. I, I highly doubt that the possibilities of that. So I'm not really scared and we still have the cuff to quickly react to that as well. Coming to the most interesting new part, Kentucky. Um, we do have Basically, Nashville is in Tennessee is our prime target because it has the same function. Also, like we have to get closer, and the closer we get, the less points the European powers get to drift towards the CSA, like Richmond in the east. And we've got these three fighting spirit objectives on the way. So I feel like this, and we've got our best general next to Garibaldi here with Grant. So I feel like this is the prime objective for us at the moment to take out these three objectives to have like the access to Nashville to take pressure from other fronts and so forth all right let's see and of course on the later the entire Mississippi would be quite interesting also to take out these forts and so on and we do have a lot of ships which could be very helpful but to start um I'd like to use this calf we have here to Hickman to go to Hickman even if it's forced march to get the uh, reconnaissance on Dresden. Oh, and we see Dresden is actually not occupied. In the aftermath, I'm quite happy I took these rangers down here. They're really fast, the way faster here than at other fronts. Uh, from here, then here, going over the river at first. So actually, this was a smart move, I feel like. New Madrid is actually like kind of valueless, so we don't have to protect that. I feel like then we knew it's the unit with the furthest range for us, so I'll go over here to immediately pose a threat to Dresden. Yes, can Grant go to Paducah? No. Oh no, we have this packaging again. Oh yeah, once again, I don't know where this is coming from. Maybe it's new security guidelines or anything by, by Slytherin or Matrix to help out here. I'm not sure. All right, let's continue. Then we've got this brigade. This is classically for me for here to secure this peninsula. Here we have the, the, the road. We've got the forest. So I feel like this is the excellent spot for them to dig in. Just hold the or at least hold the position against any kind of annoying threat that might want to move up here to cut off our roads over here. And we've got the divisions, yeah. I want basically Grant and Paducah and those two divisions should be over here. Yeah, we want them next to Paducah, so... Um, do I really have to transport him? It's only kind of annoying. Oh. But if we want to really help out down there, we need to transport him. And we don't have any 19 MPP. According to my plans, we don't have them yet. Mm. Maybe I keep him, keep him one more turn over here and then slowly move him over. Yeah, but he will only he will not help down here right now. That's the sad thing. Unless unless uh, unless we get telegraphs done, uh, it takes a while. Question is if we really need him full scale already next time. The enemy has to mobilize over here anyways. Actually, that Dresden is not protected yet is a good sign for us. All right, let's maybe continue on the other fronts first. Also, our ships needs to need to get in action. All right, let's take um, this cuff down here. Maybe I overspent a little bit of brigades along the line, but we will get them in nice positions, so why not? Okay, we let's bring these guys in. 
next to Evansville. That'll help us out to spot anything that comes over here. Then... Yeah, which I don't know if it was necessary. Necessary. Shall we force, mar force march down to Hopkinsville and secure it? I mean, it's not, anyways, I was actually, it's not that important. Let's rather try to prepare an ambush or something and move in this woods over here where we have good defense. Uh, and if the enemy moves into Hopwell, they get ambushed by us. That's, I find this a nicer solution. Also, the zone of control of this division should uh, hamper any efforts to surround us here. A little bit, I feel like a little bit open over here, so maybe our ships will go attack this fortress. Then this is an Italian brigade, uh, as far as I remember. Yep, go to Madison Will. Okay, these guys, uh, yeah, maybe this brigade is better spent down here to do some flank protection, so actually I move them back. Sometimes you gotta march for, um, back and forth to see what's good for you. <laughs> um, this cap, as far as south as possible. These guys help out securing here the east, Frankfurt for sure. And you guys can march down here from Louisville. Yeah, the main roads should be at least for the moment halfway safe. And I th actually think we can, uh, can we set up, oh yeah, we can, which is a huge advantage now over not having Kentucky, we can place units in Frankfurt and Louisville. That's quite nice. Okay, uh, yeah, let's not, after talking about it a couple of times, let's not forget our ships. And I am... which my man? I mean, let's try to take out one of these fortresses before um, they get substantial reinforcements, yeah. And we caused some damage, very nice, with our ironclad. Let's bring in the next one. Taking out this fighting spirit objective is... Well, the thing is, we have five movement, okay, we can retreat the timber clad. Yeah, we can take them out, actually. Very, very nice. Good surprise attack, I would say. Packaging, come on. Having such so much time with our... Uh, having so much fun with our riverboats. And I think... I don't know how many boats the enemy has, of course, but... Okay, they can't come over here anyways. Actually, to avoid any unpleasant surprise, I'll protect Cairo like this. So they cannot go up here. I don't know if they will. Or if they're seeing our fleet. And let's hope this gunboat is going to be enough to take this out. Nine? No, it's not. Ah. Okay, then so much about these plans. Let's play risky. We have to bring these guys in. Wonderful. And the fortress has been taken out. And it also has been taken. In this case, let's actually try also to annoy them a little bit heavier. Disrupt this bridge here down here. Very nice, the first fort, uh, for not Fort Donaldson, I forgot which one it was. Uh, <laughs> however, it was taken out, but another fighting spirit objective will help us, we will celebrate the enemy, we will suffer. Pretty nice start over here in Tennessee, Kentucky. I'm quite satisfied with that one. Uh, but let's keep on going. And over here we brought down McLellan over time, a long time, to get the supply situation in a better shape. And let's check out how he will affect it down here. We can actually move up here with one supply, so we will do that. Oh, okay, the enemy hasn't left the position, which is that. Oh, man, it would have been such a lucky one, but we will actually learn a lot, and it has infantry equipment one. The enemy already researched infantry equipment one, so we actually see... Yeah, this is a good news, or like, I don't know, we are gonna be there also very soon, hopefully. Yeah, next turn, hopefully. However, the information, getting it revealed down here, nice, um, sh shall be considered. And maybe we can actually, unlike the enemy, take out these mines, at least for a couple of turns now, and cause some damage, which will be quite interesting for us. All right. Let's then move to the Potomac front. Um, it's, oh, this is a very interesting turn. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> Don't know if you noticed. All right. Why are you so slow? Yeah, let's move, keep keep on moving. Keep on moving. We don't need you right now so badly, but you should be. Hopefully, next turn you can speed up a bit again. I guess it's mud actually. Um, you guys were refreshed, and let's take you back to action. 
Over here, yeah. I will not... Heck, down here doesn't make any sense. There's, we don't have the strength, despite having this, this division over here. No. I just annoy them over here. But this one we take actually out, yep. Uh, let's do the let's do the river the, the ships later. Sorry guys. This was a little bit confusing. What I want to do is a move over here and attack Beauregard, maybe to force them out of this this little cube. Let's say. Cross that. We can't really cause damage on them, but yeah, we're here over here, maybe. I mean it's kind of a tricky or annoying situation at least. And here we will retreat a bit to this position. That's I don't know how the situation supply-wise is going to look like. Yeah, at least five, so it's bearable. I don't know how the enemy is gonna be affected. This should also start like a little bit of a siege upon not Woodstock, but here this field. Yeah, I'm actually not too familiar at this moment with the exact detail of the rule. Yeah, but I feel like this at least of course we're not forcing the enemy to retreat down here, but this is a nice maneuver warfare we can uh, commit here. Question is if I need this position actually, or shall I rather Maybe we increase the pressure uh, on, on, on Winchester by really surrounding it now from four sides. Um Yeah, they, I wanna take this kind of room to breathe over here from this guys. So what I'm doing is maneuvering back. And taking these guys here, these guys. Oh. So much about the maneuver warfare. Oh gosh, I should have checked. Oh, these are the guys we already moved back. Oh gosh. Uh, now I got a little bit megalomaniac. No. Um. I mean, anyhow, despite this being free, this cuff will not push through and take out the supply, I guess. I mean, it could, but this one calf can't really harm Harper's Ferry too much. Hmm. But maybe we shuffle just in case this one division over here, bring them... Yeah. Reveal our uh, naval infantry. And then we can maybe bring in some other division over here, another division. I feel like we should. We see the enemy has one. There's divisions around. So uh, yeah, we will bring in one division, I guess, at this front as well. Just for security reason. The Heinzelmanns or the Double Days? I would say the Double Days. Oh, they can only go here, but nevertheless. Yeah, we should not forget about Potomac, even though we're planning not a major offensive right now. Um, yeah, but considering we mainly have Brigades didn't invest heavily in here so far, this is kind of a funky looking situation, nice looking situation for us. And down here in Fort Monroe, we do nothing else than just simply reinforce. Norfolk port should be like slowly going down now. Let's help out. Yeah, let's look at our ships actually. Supply 8, supply 8. We, to attack Fort Pulaski, we need some extra ships down here. They need to come from up here, so... Fort Harris helps out, so you guys can go down. Yeah, we don't need to force much. But I'm happy to have them raid another round. That's what I want. These guys can... Simply go to Fort Terras. I feel like the frigates, I prefer to have them out here in the open sea because a little bit of the higher range they pose. And with the gunboats, I can always do these kind of blockades. But. For the moment, until this is down, maybe we also have one frigate around here and then this very. Gunboat, oh yeah, we wanted to send them to Key West, exactly, to do that. And over time we get enough uh, naval forces down here to really attack uh, and get more active. Yeah, um, this looks fine over here. Supply 9, Supply 5, yeah, we need to reinforce your supply at some point, maybe in two turns. Okie dokie, um, nice. Oh yeah, let's deploy other units, of course. 
We've got another gunboat. That one might be rather for the for the Atlantic, yeah, then south. We still need them. We've got engineers and we've got Heinzelmann Division. Heinzelmann Division will reinforce over here Grant and his efforts. Actually, we can protect with those guys. We can protect the Cairo also a little bit. And the Barnard engineers. Okay, guys, the question is where we want them. We said one for the Potomac, one over here. But actually, let's rather finish, like, prioritize on, like, one fortification project first and also bring them in here. And because here we've got movement, we don't even know where to start because we don't... Of course, we could say let's secure Cairo, but in the end, I feel like we keep on pushing and bringing new units here so this should be in best case or in a normal case this shouldn't be come under pressure anyways so i i'm really deciding i'm bringing them also here in, in the potomac to really build up strong defenses all along yeah here so the enemy can't it's really gonna be hard for them to surprise us yep they'll start constructing next turn and if we need them over here we can always rail move them quickly so this is not a big oh, the biggest of a deal Good. Um, okay, this leaves us basically no, no units to move or to deploy. However, we can research since we last time we got production technology one. Therefore, we're going to double chit again. This is as fast as possible. It would be great. Leaving us with 848. And let's see, I wanted to... Uh, this is 285 times 3. I thought I could get three uh, divisions. Maybe I miscalculated. 600, 840, 855. No, I can only get two of those. Which leads me to the decision actually to transport Grant <laughs> and not wait over here because now we can... Uh, uh, maybe I could have moved uh, also Garibaldi then, but... We spent the 19 MPP to bring him to Paducah and therefore all these units have a great supply and great uh, and command next turn. So even if the enemy brings in, rushes in troops to Dresden, I'm quite um, optimistic to be able to take it out quick. We shall see. Also, this allows us to reinforce Fort Washida down here, which I spared in the, in the beginning. Is there anything else I spared to rather have more movement? Yeah. Uh, him we can't move anymore well anyways then just two divisions it is we're gonna get let's do hazen and mr lockwood or not mr maybe leaving us with 255 mpps mm. we've been investing heavily in all right after buying the two divisions i'm gonna get also with the remaining 250 i feel i'm going to go for a river ironclad since um if we want to attack new orleans or the mississippi from the south we definitely need some of them we can carry them to here and then move them over here this is no problem so this is an option and i kind of feel like or do I carry them here? Uh, yeah, but we can get them down definitely and to attack down here or here the Alabama River. So, or we also saw how um, kind of helpful the Ironclads can be in taking out these fortresses where we have a couple of them of the Confederacy here in the inland. So a River Ironclad may be anyways quite wise. And yeah, we've bought tons of gunboats recently. So yeah, we, let's get the Cincinnati River Ironclad. Leaving us with only little and we could save up to 100, but once again, this time we're going also... I forgot the naval engines with the other one. Whatever, we're taking also the Queen of... or the, the Rattler. Um, let's get another river gunboat to get some more punch. This is more intended actually for, for the Mississippi up here to uh, support our attacks. It's quite cheap. Give some extra reconnaissance. I feel like this might be very helpful and it's also there in two turns, so very quickly quite helpful. All right, guys, and then it's it for this turn. Um, let's finish quickly together and see if we have any decisions or um, decisions or events to take. This is going to be quite interesting what the enemy does. I do expect some kind of a retreat. I mean, also there's not too much to lose. I mean, the interesting part starts here, in my opinion. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. Or if the enemy tries to push up here and destroy our, like, encircle us ourselves. Interesting to see. But let's finish the turn first and... Maybe we have some more things to do. Destruction of Fort Henry. It was Fort Henry we destroyed. Reduces the Confederate fighting spirit. 
very nice to see. The 1st California Infantry, Colonel James H. Carlton. A collection of volunteer infantry and cavalry has been formed into units in California known as the California Column and will soon be available for service in the New Mexico Territory. Owing to the difficulties involved in crossing the southwestern desert and the great distances involved, we must make a decision now as to which route this force should take to come to east. Our recommendation would be to have the column march along the old Butterfield Overland Mail Route, which would see it arrive at Fort Bowie in southern New Mexico, July 62. Alternatively, we could send them column north and they have it follow the Oregon Trail to arrive in Denver around October 62, from which it would be further out of position to fight in New Mexico, but could more easily continue to the east. Would you like to send the California column to Fort Bowie or Denver? I mean, it's like half a year to go. Fort Bowie is down here. And the current situation is would be awesome to have them available. Then we could crush them potentially. I don't know how it's going to look like. But yeah, it's also not that many. And we don't... It's the easiest way to get actually reinforcements down here. There's not even a railway. Let's do it. And let's send him to Fort Bowie. I feel like this is a better decision. Yes, Fort Bowie, please. Mexican President uh, Juarez orders the closure of Port of Veracruz. Okay. They continue to Key West. Here we blockade Norfolk, lovely. Mexicans, it is still the sought to distort our intention, has decided to humiliate us, our nation, to dismember us, our territory, to interfere in our affairs, perhaps even break up our very nationality. I appeal to your patriotism. I conjure you, conjure you to forget all your hatreds and jealousies, to sacrifice your fortunes and to shed your blood. Rally round your government for the defense of our common cause, the most sacred and grandest cause known to man as it is to united people, the cause of one's country. In this war into which you have been provoked, I implore you to strictly observe the laws and usages of humanity. Live peacefully in the assurance that the laws of our country will protect you. Benito Juarez, President of Mexico. Well, yeah. Propaganda. We're not playing them unless the French, uh, French join the side of the, um, the CSA. Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria, dies in Windsor Castle. Oh, how, how tragic. We do get infantry equipment level 1, so we can catch up with the CSA. And... We get a lot of MPP after 150 uh, for the landing operations are spent already. Looks like that's it finally this turn. Thank you for watching. And of course, if you liked it, uh, leave me a like and subscription. This would be amazing. Makes me uh, go on a go and continue this channel. Motivates me and doesn't cost you anything. So thank you very much. Also, let me know what you think about the current state of affairs. Uh, let me know your ideas, observations and so forth in the comments. I'm always happy to interact with you guys. So thank you for that too. And otherwise, then just see you next turn in the next episode by your strategy wolf.